Good morning. We welcome you as we gather this day to lift up our prayers and praises to our wonderful God, and especially to welcome a new member into God's family. Uh, we do have sign-up sheets if anybody is for registration sheets, if anyone's interested in our Vacation Bible School. Um, those are on the counter in the entry area. Also, if you wish to order or register online, there is the website listed in the back of your portion folder. And if uh, you still would like to bring some diapers or wipes to share with Lutheran Family and Children's Services, we will gather those through next Sunday. Continue our worship then with our opening hymn, See This Wonder in the Making. It is number 593, and James is a boy, so we will use him and his. to have him touch them, 
But the disciples rebuked them. When Jesus saw this, he was indignant. He said to them, Let the little children come to me, and do not hinder them, for the kingdom of God belongs to such as these. I tell you the truth. Anyone who will not receive the kingdom of God like a little child will never enter it. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. It is your task, responses, to confess with the whole Christian church the faith of our God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, in whose name this child is to be baptized. After this child has been baptized, you are at all times to remember him in your prayer. Put him in mind of his baptism, and as much as in you lies, give your counsel and aid, especially if he should lose his parents. That he be brought up in the true knowledge and worship of God. He taught the Ten Commandments, the Creed, and the Lord's Prayer. And that as he grows in years, he place in his hands the Holy Scriptures, bring him to the services of God's house, and provide for his further instruction in the Christian faith. That he come to the sacrament of Christ's body and blood, and thus, abiding in his baptismal grace, and in communion with the Church, may grow up to lead a godly life to the praise and honor of Jesus Christ. This, then, you intend gladly and willingly to do. Yes. God enables you both to will and to do this faithful and loving work, and with his grace fulfill what we are unable to do. In order to ask the blessing of our Lord Jesus Christ upon the gathering of this child, the family of our Father, let us pray the prayer he taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord preserve your coming in and your going out from this time forth and even forevermore. Amen. Because this child cannot answer for himself, we shall all together with sponsors and parents speak faithfully on his behalf in testimony of the forgiveness of sins and the birth of the life of faith which God our Father bestows in and through baptism. Do you renounce the devil and all his works and all his ways? I do renounce them. Do you believe in God the Father Almighty? Yes, yes I believe. God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son? Yes, I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit? Yes, yes I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body. Almighty 
God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given you the new birth of water and of the Spirit, and has forgiven you all your sins, strengthen you with his grace to life everlasting. Peace be with you. Amen. Receive this white cloth to remind you that Christ has taken away and carried your sin, and put upon you his perfect righteousness. So shall you in faith ever stand before you. Receive this burning light. Live always by the light of Christ, and be ever watchful for his coming, that you may meet him with joy, and enter with him into the marriage feast of the Lamb and his kingdom shall have no Let us pray to the Lord. <clears throat> Almighty and most merciful God and Father, we thank and praise you that you graciously preserve and enlarge your family and have given Jameson the new birth and holy baptism, and made him a member of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, and an heir of your heavenly kingdom. We humbly ask you that as he has become your child, you would keep him in his baptismal grace, to lead a godly life to the praise and honor of your holy name, and finally, with all of your sins, obtain the promised inheritance in heaven through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord and giver of life, look with kindness upon the father and mother of this child and upon all our parents. Let them ever rejoice in the gift you have given them. Enable them to be teachers and examples of righteousness for their children. Strengthen them in their own baptism, so that they may share eternally with their children the salvation you have given them. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Through baptism, God has added Jameson Lee Dunn to his own people to declare the wonderful deeds of our Savior, who has called us out of darkness into his marvelous light. We welcome you into the Lord's family. We receive you as a fellow member of the body of Christ, a child of the same Heavenly Father, to work with us in his kingdom. And you, Jameson, the Lord bless you in all your ways from this time forth and even forevermore. Amen. Amen. us all. We have covered our eyes and left things undone. 
and we have acted in ways that are displeasing to you. We have placed our own selfish desires above you. We have turned our backs on people in need. Our hearts are saddened by our misdeeds. We are genuinely sorry for your sinful thoughts, words, and deeds. Have mercy on us, Lord. Give us your compassionate forgiveness, bought by your Son, Jesus, through his death on the cross. Send your Spirit to renew our hearts. Lead us to walk in your path, so that we may delight in living your will. For the glory of your holy name. Amen. God, your heavenly Father, has had compassion on you. He sent his Son to suffer and die, paying the price for your sin. Jesus has wiped away your transgressions and cleansed your heart. May you receive comfort in knowing you are a child of God, loved and cherished by your dear Father. As a called and ordained servant of Christ, and by the authority God has invested me through this, the call of this congregation, I therefore forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We continue with the intro. The Mighty One, God the Lord, speaks and summons the earth. From the rising of the sun to its setting. Hear, O my people, and I will speak. O Israel, I will testify against you. I am God, your God. Not for your sacrifices do I rebuke you. Your burnt offerings are continually before me. I will not accept the bull from your house. Or goats from your folds. For every beast of the forest is mine. The cattle on a thousand hills. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The mighty one God the Lord speaks and summons the earth. The rising of the sun to its setting. Graciously open our ears and our hearts 
to hear his call and to follow him by faith, that we may feast with him forever in his kingdom. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. The Old Testament reading for the second Sunday after the festival of Pentecost is recorded by the prophet Hosea chapters 15, or 5 and 6. Then I will go back to my place until they admit their guilt, and they will seek my face. In their misery they will earnestly seek me. Come, let us return to the Lord. He has torn us to pieces, but... He will heal us. He has injured us, but he will bind up our wounds. After two days, he will revive us. On the third day, he will restore us, that we may live in his presence. Let us acknowledge the Lord. Let us press on to acknowledge him. As surely as the sun rises, he will appear. He will come to us like the winter rains like the spring rains that water the earth. What can I do with you, Ephraim? What can I do with you, Judah? Your love is like the morning mist, like the early dew that disappears. Therefore, I cut you to pieces with my prophets. I kill you with the words of my mouth. My judgments flash like lightning upon you, for I desire mercy, not sacrifice. An acknowledgement of God rather than burnt offerings. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle reading is recorded by the Apostle Paul in his letter to the Romans, chapter 4. It was not through law that Abraham and his offspring received the promise that he would be the heir of the world, but through the righteousness that comes by faith. For if those who live by law are heirs, faith has no value, and the promise is worthless, because law brings wrath. And where there is no law, there is no transgression. Therefore the promise comes by faith, so that it may be by grace, and may be guaranteed to all Abram's offspring. Not only to those who are of the law, but also to those who are of the faith of Abraham. He is the father of us all, as it is written, I have made you a father of many nations. It is, he is our father in the sight of God, in whom we believe, the God who gives light to the dead and calls things that are not as though they were. Against all hope, Abraham in hope believed and so became the father of many nations, just as it had been said to him, so shall your offspring be. Without weakening in his faith, he faced the fact that his body was as good as dead, since he was about a hundred years old, and that Sarah's womb was also dead. Yet he did not waver through unbelief regarding the promise of God, but he was strengthened in his faith and gave glory to God, being fully persuaded that God had the power to do what he had promised. This is why it was credited to him as righteousness. The words that was credited to him were written not for him alone, but also for us. To whom God will credit righteousness. For us who believe in him, who raised Jesus our Lord from the dead. He was delivered over to death for our sins, where he was raised to life for our justification. This is the word of the Lord. Praise be to God. We join in singing the gospel acclamation. I invite you to please stand.
Gospel according to the Evangelist, Matthew chapter 9. Glory to you, O Lord. As Jesus went on from there, he saw a man named Matthew sitting at the tax collector's booth. Follow me, he told him. And Matthew got up and followed him. While Jesus was having dinner at Matthew's house, many tax collectors and sinners came and ate with him and his disciples. When the Pharisees saw this, they asked his disciples, why does your teacher eat with tax collectors and sinners? On hearing this, Jesus said, It is not the healthy who need a doctor, but the sick. But go and learn what this means. I desire mercy, not sacrifice. For I have not come to call the righteous, but sinners. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Join in singing our hymn, How Can I Thank Thee, Lord? It's number 703. Please be seated. <laughs>
Wednesday with Jesus Christ. Uh, please be seated. Dear sisters and brothers in Christ Jesus, our Lord and Savior, Amen. Today is a special Father's Day for Jameson. No, I'm not confused. I'm not jumping the gun, getting ahead of myself with Father's Day. Next Sunday, Trevor and Ashley can celebrate their first Father's Day with Jameson. But today, we celebrate that our Heavenly Father has claimed Jameson as a child of his family. Not through natural birth, which occurred 139 days ago, but rebirth through water and word in baptism. I've been working on our Vacation Bible School program, which we will be hosting here in seven weeks. This reminded me of a t-shirt that we used for VBS many years ago. God at work. God is at work in holy baptism to make us his children, to deliver us from sin and eternal death, and to give us the hope of eternal life. God has been at work since before the beginning of the world. For God is the originator of all things. He is the creator of life and the sole provider for, of everything that we have. We owe life to our God. He's the reason we exist. He's also the reason that we live that we might live for Him. God made and owns everything, including us. God created man in His name. In the image of God, He created them. Male and female, He created them. God made us in His image to find our greatest joy in giving our lives to His purposes. Everything in our life begins with God, because God is the one who gave us life, as well as the rest of his creation. David declares, the earth is the Lord's and everything in it, the world and all who live in it. As God also says in today's intro, for every beast of the forest is mine, the cattle on a thousand hills. The Apostle Paul likewise states, For by him all things were created, in heaven and earth, visible and invisible. All things were created by him and for him. Clearly we see everything that is created belongs to God. So what is this truth? For us, we're called upon to give a response. Because he has made us, he has rights to his creation. We are blessed with jobs and income and possessions. And God is the dispenser of these many good things. Even more importantly, he's the author and provider of our salvation. He sent the one and only Son that he might save us from being forever cut off from God. By Jesus' life of obedience, his suffering, his death on the cross, his rising to life again, and his ascending into heaven, Jesus has gained the forgiveness of all our sins and opened the way for us to eternal life. All this he has given to us out of his unfathomable love so, God doesn't need anything from us. No, I don't need your sacrifices of flesh and blood. What I want from you is your true thanks. I want your promises fulfilled. 
I want you to trust in me in your times of trouble so I can rescue you and you can give me honor. This makes very clear what God really wants. Our hearts. One thing that I think most of us were taught as a child was to pray before meals. One person has acknowledged that he did it half-heartedly and never would give thanks before a meal at school or at least not in any way that others might notice. He took this whole meal thing relatively lightly. Then, one day, something dawned on him. Everything in this world is God's. We don't own it. It's only given to us to use for a little while. God is the one who graciously gave it to us to use. He could also take it away. Or he could choose not to give it to us at all. It's totally up to him. All of a sudden, praying before meals takes on a new perspective. All of a sudden, there's purpose and meaning to those seemingly routine prayers. If you sit down and smell the good food before you, whether that's at home, in a restaurant, at church, or wherever, prayer acknowledges God is the one who truly provides for us. And prayers of thanksgiving then are an appropriate way to say thank you for doing all these great things for us. In the Old Testament, God required the people of Israel to offer up sacrifices. But he made it very clear that he was in no way dependent upon humans for sacrifices or anything else. Actually, it's the other way around. God specifically mentioned every kind of animal sacrifice offered to him. Bulls, goats, animals of the forest, cattle, birds, and made clear that he neither eats nor needs any of them. Indeed, all the animals of the earth are his already. At the same time, God made clear that sacrifices as such were not really the issue. However, they were acceptable to God, who neither needs them nor feeds on them, acceptable only if they represented the people offering them, and only if these people were truly praising and thanking God with all their lives. God's people recognize they need to be and are dependent on God, then he provides for their needs. The bribery that inauthentic worship represents does not work with God. God desires genuineness more than outward appearances. By the perfect offering of himself upon the cross, Jesus has done away with the need for animal sacrifices and put self-sacrifice in its place. The real sacrifice which God desires in his people today is praising and giving thanks to him. Praising God is simply recognizing God as God, unlike anyone else. God is great when his presence is recognized and when we take his will into account and willingly do it. Following his will for us in our lives, revealed in his law, especially in the Ten Commandments, expresses real gratitude in action. <coughs> Having recognized all things come from God and as a gift, the one who truly worships God expresses Gratitude, by respecting that gift and behaving in ways that show this respect. True worship of God is not confined to what happens just in this place. True worship is a daily habit of living with the realization that God is always present and responding to his presence with thanksgiving 
for the gift of life and for all his other gifts and blessings. God wants us to be genuine, to be the same person at all times and in all places, not to compartmentalize life into separate categories. For when we do this, we cut ourselves off from Him. We can't relate to God by trying to carve this world into separate pieces and then giving Him some but holding some back for ourselves. We're not God's equals, nor do we feed Him, nor does He need us. Our psalm reminds us how different God is from us. Though we are made in His image and likeness, we shall never be His equal, let alone be His superior. We will always need Him, while He will never need us. He will always feed us, while we can never be the one who never needs even when he became our equal in taking on human form in his son, Jesus Christ, he showed us how superior he was in the way that he lived that very humanity that he gave us. He showed us what frauds we can be. Yet, he empowered us to become his true children. If and only if we receive his only God's Son on His terms. God's not fooled by pious actions, empty of true faith. We ought never think that God either does not see us or that He doesn't care what we do. Sadly, people erroneously believe or hope that all of the behaviors that God's Word condemns aren't so bad in God's eyes. Otherwise, why doesn't he do something about it? Well, scripture teaches us God allows us time in order to repent. But there will come a time when that opportunity is passed and judgment will come. So may we always remember that God is the creator and owner of all things. May we also recall he makes them wonderful promises, which are not included in the verses of our intro, but are included in Psalm 50, namely, sacrifice thank offerings to God. Fulfill your vows to the Most High. Call upon me in the day of trouble. I will deliver you, and you will honor me. And he who sacrifices thank offerings honors me, and he prepares the way so that I may show him the salvation of God. Amen. Now may the peace and the love of our God that passes beyond our understanding of God protect our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus, our Savior. Amen. Join to offer up our hymn of response. O then the Lord will guide my ways, number 707.
our Heavenly Father hears our requests and answers them according to His good and gracious will, let us pray for the Church, the flock redeemed by Christ the crucified, and the needs of all people. Almighty God, you strike down and you heal. Though we justly deserve your wrath for our sin, lead us to repentance. Revive us and raise us up, that we may live before you in true faith and thanksgiving forever. You desire steadfast love, and that your people would know you. Be with those who work this weekend to prepare for our synod's convention, and with those who are making final preparations for the Lutheran Women's Missionary League National Convention. The Mighty One, God the Lord, speaks and summons the earth from the rising of the sun to its setting. Lord of the Church, bless pastors, teachers, and all church workers, that your word would sound forth in abundance. As you sent Jesus into the world to call disciples to follow him, bless all those that you have called into your church today with the desire for eternal riches more than the wealth of this age. Move the pastors of every congregation truly to follow Jesus by keeping all the teachings of Holy Scripture, that your people may never be misled, that man-made divisions in Christendom may be removed, and that your church may be extended. Look with your special favor upon candidate Andrew Nelson, as he will be ordained and installed as associate pastor of Chapel of the Cross in St. Peter's. Open the ears of all who hear to acknowledge your steadfast love. Since you promised to make Abraham the father of many nations, instill in your church a love for the people of all races, languages, and nations, which will lead us without partiality to open our doors to every kind of people and to send missionaries to those places where churches are not yet established. Fulfill your promise to Abraham through our proclamation of the gospel of Jesus, the Savior of all nations. The mighty one, God the Lord, speaks and summons the earth. From the rising of its sun to its setting. Father in heaven, by your grace, Abraham did not weaken in faith, but trusted your anonymity. Strengthen parents to persist in their callings and train their children in your word and ways. Defend them from discouragement and apathy, and convince them that you are able to do what you have promised. You made childless Abraham the father of many nations when his body was as good as dead, giving him faith to trust in the promised Messiah. Strengthen our faith also to trust your promises despite our weaknesses and troubles. The Mighty One, God the Lord, speaks and summons the earth. From the rising of the sun to its setting. Creator of all things, you call into existence what did not exist, and govern it for good. Remember those who have given authority among the nations, that the laws they administered might reflect your order and maintain peace. Since we cannot love you whom we have not seen without loving our brothers whom we can see, give us the desire and ability to work together for the betterment of our communities, our counties, our state, and our nation, and enable the leaders of this world to work together for the good of all. Let your people be salt and light in a world torn by strife and the power of darkness. The Mighty One, God the Lord, speaks and summons the earth. From the rising of the sun to its setting. In your awesome creation, you provided the sea, the soil, the water, the seasons of the year, and the cycles of nature. Be with those who till, plant, and care for the fields and gardens, so they may be strengthened by your constant presence in all their labors. Give us favorable weather that the earth may be fruitful. Especially now, we eagerly desire refreshing rains to water the earth and rejuvenate plant crops. Lead us always to give thanks for your gracious care of our lives, to realize that every good thing comes from your hand, and to use the gifts you have given us to your
Restore them according to your gracious will, and strengthen their faith in your faithfulness and love. Help us never to forget that you are the source of all healing. Intervene for good in the lives of those among those of, among us who are sick and shut in, and all who need you. Receive our thanks for the healing which you have already provided among us. The mighty one, God the Lord, speaks and summons the earth. From the rising of the sun to its setting. Remembering the sufferings and death of your beloved Son, we place our petitions at your throne of mercy, trusting your power to hear our prayers, and grant us all we need through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor.